Good morning, good afternoon. Jacob speaking here, and we are here with another issue of the uh, Concircle Logistics Mini Academy. Uh, for today, and I am apologizing because it took me a while to come back to this. For today, I prepare a little bit of information about visibility, meaning logistics visibility, track and trace, and so-called in-transit information. And what are some of the key things and some of the key players on this field? Uh, some of our customers maybe ask for it, or they even speak any of the, about any of these companies, and it's important that we understand it to some degree. So what we will what will be the value of visibility and track and trace? We talk about uh, we will be talking about a little bit about um, SAP business uh, network for logistics or logistics business networks. There's two names being used. Um, and then also we'll a little bit explain what is the so-called GPS tracking and how is it being used in this context. And we will be mentioning all of these companies throughout the next few minutes. Um, and I hope it will be useful that you will understand what it is. So visibility, what is visibility? Physical visibility we, in this sense we mean is really like how does the cargo moves from the origin to the destination? Eventually it will be a set of dates right it, it departed on the 1st of september and arrived on 15th of september as an example and it went through certain points um why do we need to monitor that it's 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 of course for the track and trace purpose so if something gets stuck in the suez canal i want to know what got stuck there and how long is it already there but it's also used for a calculation of the uh estimated time of arrival for example or it's it's used for monitoring end-to-end -end cycle time uh, of the transit uh, part, right? And it's also used very often as a broader visibility, meaning document level, uh, uh, processing in the factory or in the warehouse, and then a, a in transit as, as well. So it's kind of a bigger picture. It could be drawn as a bigger picture, but we're now focusing on the physical or in transit visibility. And it's nothing else than you see, it's basically these events or milestones, and they are being reported by, uh, uh, typically by the carriers. And that's one very important thing. It's either coming from the entity that is contractually obliged to provide the data or through the GPS. And I will get to the difference in, in a very, very minute. So imagine our flow. And again, if we ship something from Austria to Germany, it's a one truck flow. It's pretty simple. It typically takes a day or perhaps maximum two, um, so there's some visibility here as well, but it doesn't make a big difference. Where it makes a big difference are on those long uh, uh, transportations, typically Asia to Europe, uh, with multi-legs or intermodal movement. So in my example, just to make it super, super complicated, I kind of thought of a uh, five-leg movement or five stages movement. So the truck, say LTL, between the origin factory to the consolidation center, Concession center prepares the ocean container, and then there's another truck, which is a drage truck. That's a little bit different, right? That move it over to the port. Then it's get loaded on a vessel. It sails over to uh, to Europe, say to Hamburg, unload it. It goes again on a drage truck to a deconsolidation or a destination warehouse, and it's being turned into uh, either a pallet or uh, or basically a unique shipment to the destination to the customer, right? Every of these events could be monitored, and what that event need to basically, it's a super small message or super uh, small uh, information set. It just tells us when, what, and 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 where, and optionally why, in case it's delayed. So there's some sort of a uh, structured code which describes why things are delayed, why things are damaged, what not, right? But it's just, uh, we, we don't need to spend too much time on this. So now, how do we obtain this data? Historically, there used to be what is called a push model, so-called EDI 315 for ocean or EDI 204, uh, uh, sorry, 214 for uh, trucking. And it is the carrier, so it could be Maersk, it could be MSC, or El Cava Varter, or DHL, whoever is operating the, 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 the asset, the vessel or trucks, right? They are pushing that's why I push into certain uh, platforms, which are then promoting it to the shippers or to other TMSs, right? Most notably, it is the Intra or GT Nexus. I used to work with both of them before. And the message is super simple, very uh, 90s like code. Um, and of course, there was also underpinned by the technology back then. You need to have a small messages because it was all FTP. 
Now, recent 10 years, it's a standard of a pool, of course, API. There is an organization called DCSA, Digital Container Shipping Association, which pushed the standards on the API. And pretty much all of ocean carriers have are API enabled, where basically uh, by a pull method, by request response method, you can get uh, pretty much the same information, but any time it's not push, but it's pull. And um, it can be still wired through a platforms of, of some sort. So it could be also Nexus is offering this method now, uh, 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 or Project 44 is, uh, is offering this platform. And it can be consumed by a shipper, by the customer who buys that solution, or by other TMSs. So here we are getting to the key thing. Uh, uh, SAP solutions would be typically hooked up to one of the providers to get this information, right? So they would, uh, they would, for example, um, 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 uh, collaborate with Project 44 to get this information, right? That's a that's a pull uh, method. But again, here's super important thing: the, the origin of the information is with the carrier. It's the contracted party who maintains some sort of a system to track that cargo, track that container, track that uh, a pallet, right? And then of course, recent, perhaps 10 years, booming industry uh, GPS or, or IoT enabled visibility. So, and it basically is primarily working on the land only. It doesn't work on the ocean as it is being perceived sometimes. That's wrong, that's a misunderstanding. It primarily works on the uh, on the land, meaning uh, trucking and a little bit also rail. I will get to that in a minute. Basically, every truck has a telematic device, so-called ED, ELD, and every uh, truck manufacturer has some sort of a data service. Volvo has one, Mercedes has one, Man has one, Mac, the one in US has one. It's because it's it's a legal required by now, and they collect all these data as as a set of pings, right? And tons of pinks uh, which are coming over, and then they are what we call an data aggregators, right? They they invested the money and the effort to connect to all of these key servers, right? Uh, they 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 normalize the data, they kind of clean it up if this is necessary, and then they either use it as an app and send it to their shipper, right, or to another uh, 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 TMS. So again, our um, SAP is actually. Uh, uh, working with Project 44 as a partnership, right? Uh, but also they have adapters to get the data from Shipeo or Vakeo. By the way, Project 44 is an American company originally. Shipeo and Vakeo are French. I don't know why they're French, uh, but it just happens this way. And that's their business model. Business model is aggregation. And Project 44 does this on the road, as well as does this on the ocean via the pool method. So if you come back, oh yeah, I have a few information about the uh, ELD, so ELD basically will send a set of pings, right? Every almost a minute or whatever is the arrangement there. And then you basically put those pins on the map and you can basically literally, the same way as you as you track yourself when you drive on the Google Maps, you can literally see where it driven, where it was waiting and so on, right? Of course, this data I use for uh, insurance, for the driver, uh, driver time, for um for monitoring of the health of the truck and and whatnot, but it's not our use case. It's just extra information. Now back to our transport, our visibility, our journey from Asia to Europe, right? All these five legs, how are they being actually tracked, right? On the first leg, it's basically GPS, as we said right now, right? That's the possibility. We could ask the carrier, the trucking entity, to give us the EDI or even perhaps XML that doesn't really matter, but it's very very cumbersome and demanding on their on their systems. Typic and 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 the requirement is very bad typically. So typically nowadays it's the GPS standard. Same thing for the second leg, the the dredge because it's yet uh, a, a, a it's yet a truck, and um, for rail is also now appearing a solution. There's a company called Nexio and they basically collaborate with every major railway company in Europe and so we can now um, monitor also each rail car uh, on its own right and then on the ocean which is I think the the alpha and omega of the success is here's the thing so we we need on the container level right to see where the container is there is no GPS not widespread GPS yet even though there are some carriers who are now attaching the GPS devices to each of the container but right now it's still not there yet so any of the data created needs to use the pull or push method to get the information of where the container is, right? Only on the vessel level, that's different, right? Where physically that vessel is, right? The vessel can carry thousands of containers. We have what is called an AIS system, which is a public system, quite old, 
and there we can get the data where the vessel is. So if I know my container is on vessel ABC, then I can basically monitor where that particle vessel is on any of the ocean. And there are specific solutions, marine, traffic, transvoyant, which do only this and they do it very well. And then on the on the destination, we have pretty much the same arrangement as we had on the origin, right? So that's the that's how the things works in the background. Now, why does SAP LBN needs the project for you? I mean, maybe you already can answer it by yourself, right? I have here a few points. Basically, Project 44 is uh, is only needed to provide the data for what you call the global track and trace use case. There is more use cases. There is more use cases like uh, material uh, uh, traceability, freight collaboration, settlement, and so on. Right. So that's all one thing. Second thing is it's basically not worth it for SAP to invest and build all those connections. Right. They basically go to Project 44 or for the sake for any other of the data aggregator and get the data. Uh, uh, get the data back into their backend, right? And also, SAP LBN is an app, right? It it does contextualize the information. It does bring it to say a freight order perspective, or even to an order perspective in that sense, uh, uh, where about of the cargo is, right? So that's the key difference. And then, just so as you understand, same way are most of the other solutions built: E2 Open, Transport. Nexus and Alpega. They are not data aggregated. They are collaborating with the other data aggregators like Project 44 or Shippo to get the data. So that's the key thing I want to kind of convey today. I hope this was useful. Um, a little bit long. I'm sorry for that. Have a good one. Cheers.